All right, in this video I will be discussing the recordings, the videos, and the, a lot of the videos that I've seen over the years that I learned from. And um, this is going to be new for a lot of you out there, some of you teenagers out there. Um, this here is called a VHS tape, okay? <laughs> uh, some of you obviously know what this is. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but some of you might not have ever seen one of these. You might say, man, he's old. I, he actually has VHS tapes. Oh, it gets worse. I also have cassette tapes. Would you look at that? Talk about backwards, you know. Um, cassette tapes. Can you imagine? Well, it shows you how old I am. But uh, <clears throat> so originally, I first heard about the Bible version issue from the creation seminar from Kent Hovind. Um, Kent fell off the deep end. He's a really bad guy. I don't recommend messing with him. But um, Ken Hoven, major issues, but he brought out the whole thing of the NIV removing verses and whatever, and it kind of a, I thought, huh? At the time I was using an NIV, I went and I checked it out. Those verses aren't there, not in the two oldest and best manuscripts. What does that mean? I want to learn more about this. So I began a major study into this issue. Um, again, reading and researching both sides. Um, but a lot of what I learned came from audio and also video. Can't see me going audio because they're down here off camera, but I'm going to show you just a couple of these that I um, learned from. I no longer have Ken Hovind's uh, whole series. I used to have everything, all, all of his debates, all of his special topic, VHS tapes, all of his creation seminar. Um, I got rid of those and drop down to his creation seminar series that he has here on DVD, the multi-part DVD series, you know, that you have here with the different things. And, and, um, he does a pretty good job on the whole creation versus evolution thing. And so, um, that right there, I learned from that. And I started to study, uh, some of Gail Ripplinger's information. Um, Text Mars, here, Unholy Bible Versions of the New Age. It's a VHS tape. And um, and then Ripplinger Lecture Series, two and a half hours, documenting the New Age influence in the, in the NIV, New King James Version, New American Standard Version, and the Scripture's pres perfect preservation in the King James Bible, right there. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if... Uh, this was the one that she did. I don't think this is the one she did with Prophecy Club, but um, there was that one. New Age Bible versions there. Another interview that she did. Um, the Forbidden Book here. I also got it later on on DVD. I'll find it here. <clears throat> this is the VHS tape here. This is the DVD edition of it. And this one was the first time I knew anything about that there were martyrs that died. I was never taught that growing up in church, going to church, never even heard about martyrs dying. Now, you know, I could have been collaring pages in, during the sermon and not been listening or something or playing or just ignoring what was being preached, as a lot of children do when they go to church buildings, um, when you're raised with that stuff. But I don't remember ever hearing anything about martyrs dying because of the Bible. So uh, that was what really affected me strongly when I saw how the Catholic Church tortured Christians um, so that I could have the Bible, the Word of God, and used men like Wycliffe, Wycliffe Luther, and Tyndale right there on the back. So there's that. And I remember, um, here's another one, <clears throat> uh, Gail Ripplinger, all these different tapes in here, um, and... Um, she was interviewed by Judy Panalto, Bill Felt Feltner, John Barella, Kenneth Hill, Noah Hutchings, Schiffer and Berger Report, Tex Mars, Dr. Uh, Joseph Chambers, Paul Creek Ministries, Action 60 and Southwest Radio, South Southwest Radio Church, The Roots of the Language of the New Versions. All these are different radio interviews that she did. And I got on her website at one point in time and there was a video... Uh, I have it right here, um, called the NIV Debate, 
between Peter Ruckman and Dr. Earl Kaland, I think is the guy's name. And, uh, and I thought, I don't, you know, I'd heard about Peter Ruckman actually, ironically, through, uh, uh, where it is, where is it? Right here. Um, through James White, through his book. I actually had heard of uh, Peter Ruckman. I read, the first quotes I read of Peter Ruckman were actually from this book, <laughs> believe it or not. A lot of people might think, well, you know, Brian, he refer references Ruckman so much, he must have been a born and raised in a Ruckman type church or something. No, no, not at all. I, like I said, this is actually the first time I heard of it. Um, so, but then I bought, uh, the first time I actually saw Ruckman, not being misquoted like what's done in here. Um, <clears throat> first time I actually saw Ruckman was in, in this debate right here that he did with Earl Kalan and I thought, I'd like to see some more of what this guy has to say because he just made a fool out of Earl Kalan. So not too hard to do on that. But um, so I got this cassette tape thing. It's a four part cassette tape set. How God opened my eyes to the AV 1611. And again, Peter Ruckman was not raised in a King James Bible believing Baptist church or something else. He wasn't, he was raised Episcopalian. So he would have been, he would have gone through all the new version stuff, just like I was raised with and everything else. Um, probably worse in the Episcopalian system. And he went to Bob Jones University and they were also attacking the King James Bible by the time he went there, undermining its authority and everything else. So his statement is that God got him to that position. Because back then it wasn't very popular to stand for the King James Bible. There's another one, um, Peter Ruckman, a bunch more tapes from him. Um, another one, question and answers. Again, cassette tapes, eight cassette tapes there of uh, different things on the Bible version issue and on other questions that he had when he would go to these churches and things and he'd do a question and answer thing, you ask any question. Here is eight unique tapes. I printed this out myself, got a little black cover for the different tapes in here and um, the first one is from NASB to King James Version to KJV Dr. S. Franklin Logsdon that's on my um, channel the testimony of Franklin Logsdon he's the guy that wrote the forward for the New American Standard Version he came out and said that uh, Dewey Lockman was a personal friend of Franklin Logsdon and Dewey Lockman was the businessman that bought the rights to the American Standard Version of 1901 it had you know gone out of print so he bought the rights to the American Standard Version re-released it as the new American Standard Version Frank Logsdon wrote the preface to it and then he came out later and he said I have to renounce any connection to it and this I have that recording on my channel it's still here on the channel um, I think it is unless YouTube deleted it never know um, but that's there you can hear him his own words saying why he denounced the new American Standard Version. Hath God said fingerprints of God by Dr. I think Larry Bartlett or something. Um, what it cost to stand for the King James Bible by Alex Underwood. He was a professor, I think at Tennessee Temple, that got fired because he went to listen to Dr. Ruckman and he brought up some issues about the Bible Version thing and they fired him from a Bible college. And then uh, New Bible Versions, The Catholic Connection by Tex Mars parts one and two um, so there's cassette tapes and there's also I have a whole bunch more cassette tapes from Ruckman from James Melton from a bunch of the older guys and things that were really bringing out a lot of cassette tapes and things um, moving on here we have what's the difference parts one and two by by Peter Ruckman right there I guess it's probably available on DVD but he gets into a lot of the um, manuscript evidence and whatever else about the Bible versions right there by Peter Ruckman. Um, are there errors in the King James Bible? It was a debate that he did. Does it say? No. A debate that he did. I can't think of what the guy's name was. Was it Curtis Hudson? Not Curtis Hudson. I uh, can't think of the guy. If you know, put it in the comment section below. But if you're aware of this old debate that he did, but Ruckman, another debate that he did. And then he had the Search for Absolute Truth, which is four volumes right here, four different VHS tapes. 
And when she gets into manuscript evidence again, and also uh, evidence from science, evidence from logic, and, and whatever else, proving that the Bible is God's word, and that uh, God is real, Jesus Christ is real, and everything else. Um, and then over here, we have uh, Chris Pinto's, I think this is one of Chris Pinto's works, the A Lamp in the Dark, here. This came out around the same time that my mine came out. I think he came out just a little tiny bit before mine. Uh, I was not trying to copy his the cover of his by having Ignatius de Loyola on the front of mine. This is mine over here. This is Pinto's. But uh, a lot of the same information. And um, I mean, mine was literally... Production was finished, and I was going into producing, making the cover for it, and everything else. On the back here, you can see at the back of my video, you can see Kurt Alon there in the black suit meeting with the Pope. Uh, Alon is the guy that you know the Nestle Alon text. So, um, and there's the old ministry address in Hopeland, PA, <laughs> way back when the ministry got started. But there's that, um, the indestructible book. International Baptist Missions. It was in the UK, I think, that they did that one. Tears Among the Wheat, the wheat um, which is also a Chris Pinto, you know, Adulam Films, I think. But um, it gets into some of the, the conspiracy thing of, I think the book's over there somewhere, of um, that uh, Constantine von Tischendorf, the guy who found the Sinaiticus, it was all just a forgery. It was a it was a Masonic conspiracy to release this, oh, we just found this ancient codex and it was all a lie. So the oldest and best thing was just a forgery in the 19th century to get people away from the King James Bible. And this was the first time I heard about that and I thought, that really makes some sense. But I kind of let it drop in my mind and I, I went on saying this lie that that uh, Constantine von Tischendorf found the Sinaiticus manuscript in St. Catherine's Monastery and it was in the pile of trash to be burned and all this other stuff. Not true. Uh, not true at all. It was all just a forgery by a Constantine uh, Simonides, I think is the guy's name. Um, if I'm pronouncing that right, it might be Simonides or Sim I think it's Sim Simonides. Another, a Greek guy that would make ancient looking manuscripts and things and whatever, but Tischendorf basically forged the whole thing and he proves it in here. And uh, there's other sources which I'll be talking about in another video on that issue. But uh, the King James Bible, the 400th, um, 400 year celebration type of thing that they came out with, the book that changed the world. And it did. It did. And again, you don't really need any more proof than that. The greatest book that ever existed in the world, in the history of the world, is the King James Bible. That's not a prejudiced thing for me to say or whatever else. It's the truth. The King James Bible is the greatest book ever in the history of the world. And then the KJV, the making of the King James Bible, still a best sale, seller after 400 years, another uh, video production that came out. Um, you know, this one's not the best in the world, but, you know, I appreciate some of the things they said to honor the King James Bible. And so um, what I realized after this looking at all this information here, the audio stuff, and there was a lot of things online too, you know, that I listened to. Different websites I'd go on to. Um, this would have been back in the early to mid 2000s. And I would go on to different things and I'd hear stuff about the new versions and, and whatever else. So I, I learned the pros and the cons and the, the different arguments for and against the King James Bible. Uh, just spent, you know, literally thousands of hours studying this whole issue. And what kind of bothered me is I heard a lot of claims about the NIV removed 64,000 words. The NIV, you know, this and the Sinaiticus and Vaticanus contradict each other 3,000 times in the Gospels alone and all these numbers. And I would think, okay, yeah, all right, probably. I, I have no reason to doubt that because they're corrupt and I can see the fruit from being raised in new version churches. I knew the fruit of the new versions. Okay. You know, and since I was reading the King James Bible, I saw the changes that it was making in my life. I truly was born again at that point. And, um, and it was more than just, you know, using the right Bible. I realized that I was a false convert up until that point in time. And I was just faking it with the Lord and the whole thing. 
I was counting on my false childhood conversion, um, which was not real, was not legitimate. I was definitely not born again. I did not have the Holy Spirit of God within me. But I got saved, and the Lord really started to make the King James Bible come alive to me, um, unlike any other book I've ever read. And I still had my NIV. I still had my New American Standard Bible from when I was a little boy, my first Bible that I carried to Sunday school with me. But uh, they were just dead books to me at that point in time. <clears throat> and even though I would still read them. So, but the one thing I saw, um, Peter Ruckman's two-part series, What's the Difference? He would actually take a new version and he would open it up and he'd say, it says, it reads this way. And he would open it and he'd go like this and the cameraman would zoom in and he'd say, get, the, get that verse right there, you know, and he'd point to it. And I liked that because I thought, okay, He's not just footnoting something like the books that I'm reading, which I'll show that in another video. He's not just footnoting something. He's actually showing this thing on camera. Here it is in the book, the exact quote. And I thought, I like that. I like that concept. And so I came up with this idea of I would like to um, show, I will put on a nice white dress shirt and I will show books and I will you know, film with a camera like it'd be first person viewing type of thing, looking down at documents and I will hold them up and show them on video. And I thought, you know, I don't want to just make, just regurgitate what I've learned and whatever else because I actually had taught um, this uh, thing here. And again, uh, this is another thing, I'll show this in another video, but a lot of the articles I printed out from online, but I was, I got this whole, um, all these transparencies. I bought these from Gail Ripplinger, and that's how I was teaching my uh, a Sunday school thing on it. It's just you know, scanned pages from her book, uh, New Age Bible versions, and I had a new version seminary educated guy come up to me afterwards, and he said. That's the problem with you King James only people. He said, you don't do your own, you know, research. You just regurgitate what each other brings out. And um, I took that as a challenge. It was an insult, but I took it as a challenge. And I said, okay, I'm going to prove that there's an agenda behind the NIV, that there's a politically correct agenda. And it's not backed up by the Nestle's text. There's no justification for this. So that's when I did my collation work. And again, I had the NIV, the Today's New International Version, and my King James Bible and a Strong's Concordance. And I looked up 20,000 references to important words in the King James Bible. And, um, and I compiled it. And here is the list, right here. Um, word, the word is Lord. Total words in the KJV text, 7,569. And I counted them by hand. I did not use artificial intelligence or computers or whatever else, I would count it forward and I would count it backward just to make sure that I had it right. All right, <laughs> wanted to make sure I was, that it is to the best of my ability. Total number of NIV perversions, 187% or 187% perverted 2%. Total number of TNIV perversions, 190. So they did three more, they corrupted three more, 3%. Three That's pages one through eight. And I went down through, you know, Jesus, Jesus is uh, Christ, no, Jesus is like the plural possessive. Christ, the Word, Holy, Godhead, God, fear God, feared God, fearful of God, fearing God, repent, repentance, repenting, repented, repenting, repentings, salvation, saints, saints, souls, down through. And I documented it. Over 20,000 references that I looked up in all three Bibles. So if you want to say going to each verse, it would have been 60,000 it took me a long time to do. I was a single man at the time. <laughs> Had to be to do that kind of work. But I took the time. I put in the time to do my own actual research. And I came up with 5,000, over 5,000 documented word perversions in the NIV slash TNIV. I went back into the, here you have in the back part, um, the verse, Nestle's 27th, the Texas Receptus, KJV, NIV, and TNIV. Right there it is, where the TNIV would add, you know, and brothers and sisters, and sisters, 
not anywhere in the Nestle's text. And um, and then there's the normal, just the normal verse deletions. You have the verse, KJV, NIV, TNIV, like that. And so I did this work, and then I came out, and I thought, that's done. It took me a very long time to do, over a year, and um, <clears throat> working on it. Like I said, I was a single guy. I was living at my parents' place at the time, so I didn't have to have a, a big income or anything else, and I took all that time. Uh, I don't even know how many hours, and it's actually this, this is the printed form. I actually have in my files over here, can't see it, I'm not going to show it on camera, but it's down that way. I actually have all of this work written by hand. So again, I wrote it all out by hand. Um, did that work, and I came out, and I was brand new to the whole thing of filming. I had a tripod, this one that I have my audio thing on here, it's a old Targus, I think, aluminum tripod, real shaky and things, but I, I tried not to touch it or whatever, and I'd have my arms going around the tripod, camera's about right here, and I'd be looking in through the viewfinder, and I'd be pointing out things with this old original video. And uh, you never even see my face in the video. And I mean, I played, I had a keyboard, and I found out how I could hook up my keyboard to my computer to record what I was playing. And I, I played How Firm a Foundation, myself on the keyboard and I can't play music for anything and so I figured out how to play you know how firm a foundation it sounds terrible but I got my music for it and I tried to figure out Sony Vegas and make this video happen put chapters in it did the whole thing I was using an old Windows Vista computer that was always crashing on me blue screen of death I mean it was quite a trial getting this thing done but the original design was that you can see there, and then I came out with a, a second edition because it was kind of hard to see the title on the spine there. And so I came out with a second edition. As you can see, I outlined it a little bit in yellow, so it's a little bit easier to see than the first original one. The words are a little bit bigger, and on the spine it's a little bit easier to see the, uh, the second edition there, the yellow. So... Um, and I took this video and I sent it to a uh, Bible Baptist bookstore. I sent it to Sam Gipp. I sent it to Gail Ripplinger. I sent it to Chick Publications. I sent it to Tex Mars, Kent Hovind, you know, back, back at the time it was Creation Science Evangelism before he fell apart. And I only heard back from one. I, well, I think I hear, heard back from Tex Mars and they said, oh, thank you for sending us the video. We'll check it out when we can. Never heard back. Gail Ripplinger was the only one and she said, I'd like to sell this you know, through AV publications. So she was originally selling this video. And then after that one, I came out with one, did a little bit better um, work with it. Ridiculous Bible Perversions of the New Age. Right there. My little thing with Pope Benedict holding the NIV underneath his um, arm there. And then I came out with this as the later new, you know, with a new bonus section at the back of it. And um, there's the back of it right there. And uh, again, um, okay, this would have been the one I had, I guess, when we moved to Bridgewater, this address here. But um, originally it would have been Hopeland, but I don't have any of those. I guess I sold those out. But <clears throat> this is the second one I came out with, Ridiculous Bible per Perversions of the New Age. That time I actually had an overhead camera. I still have my overhead camera set up right here. You can't see it on video, but it's here. I have my camera that I can hook up upside down or to show this way I can zoom in and out with that particular camera. I have a monitor up there that I can see what I'm looking at. So I came out with that and then I started to do work on this one, the real Bible version issue exposed. This one took me five months to do, to produce. And um, I really tried to do my very best on this one. Bought a lot of royalty-free music. Uh, very expensive. Um, you know, $150, $200 for a CD of royalty-free music because it contains the license and everything else that you can use it. Like I said, this one has been seen millions of times. So that another video. Um, it's been mirrored on a lot of different channels. Some of the channels have, you know, several hundred thousand views of this video. So I thank the Lord. He's really 
help that one to go viral, if you will, on many different um, channels here on YouTube. And then I came out and I redid the original, um, the original from NIV to KJV, and I made it into this from NIV to KJV. And this one here was a, a two DVD set. This is one I kept for myself, but the original, the part one DVD would have had fire. The other one would have been a blue sky on there, <clears throat> KJV. And I would sell this along with my 5,000 documented word perversions as a set for a while. Got to be way too much work. Um, I just couldn't keep up with it and everything else. So I stopped producing this and getting them out there and things. And I was doing quite a bit of that for a while. Um, so, but then I, you know, basically came to YouTube and, and, uh, I started to realize, okay, well I can do this thing. And at first I was not re receiving any donations. No, I don't receive donations. And a brother, a couple brethren kind of got to me that on that. And they said, brother, you can do a lot more for the body of Christ, bring your videos out online and just make it donations. All right. Instead of trying to make a product and sell a product and deal with all the tax stuff and the shipping and all the other stuff. Just bring it out. Those who feel led of the Lord can donate. Other people that can't donate, they don't have the money or whatever else. Okay, they can at least see it for free. You're going to get the truth out much better. Okay, yeah. So that's why I'm here on YouTube. Um, but now again, you can see another part of my research. What I did um, on this issue. And uh, so um, <clears throat> a lot of these videos are still very good. There's other ones that are out there on the Bible version issue. There was a series of videos that came out with uh, Sam Gipp about uh, the Bible version thing and whatever. And, and he's, you know, going to these different classes and these young guys coming up to him and, you know, asking him questions about the Bible version issue and uh, did a real good job on those videos. Very well made. And uh, I'd recommend those. So um, I guess that will be it for this one. And I'll go on, do another one here on the books that I've read on this issue and some other books that I recommend and some that I don't recommend. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so hopefully my voice will last for that last one there. But uh, just wanted to get this one out and just get this information out there again to show. Uh, I realize you know, some people might say that this is bragging. Oh, look at how much he studied. And that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing it because a lot of people do not realize that, yes, I have actually put in many years, 24 years of research into this issue. I'm not ignorant. Okay, I am not at all ignorant of the Bible version issue. I believe that the King James Bible is God's book. After many years of seeing it attacked and me defending it and others defending it, people attacking, seeing brethren that were there and they would fall away and come back later on and then other people, false brethren, that would come along and they're defending the King James Bible and then they flip around and they turn in and they hate it and they try to destroy it and they try to destroy me and stab me in the back and the whole thing. I've been through it for 24 years. So um, uh, you're not going to move me from my position. Just that simple. I've been through too much. And the Lord's been there for me the whole time with His pure, perfect, inspired, infallible, inerrant word the King James Bible. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.